Hello everyone, this is Nina with Waffle Flower. I'm so excited our foil plates are finally shipping. I know the lighting is not ideal right now, but I really wanted to get this video up on our YouTube channel before you get the product. So we already have questions from people asking, what are foil plates? What supplies they needed to start foiling? And how to get a consistent good results with our foil plates? If you have similar questions, keep on watching. Half foil plates are basically designs made into a sheet of metal that you heat up on a platform and foil and paper, then run through a DECA machine to transfer the design onto paper. I need to put a little disclaimer here. As far as I know, there are at least four different configurations for foil plates out there on the market today. We worked over half a year to develop the version we have now. All the specs and the settings I mentioned in this video are tested on our version of the foil plates. It might work with some other brands, but if you're not sure, you can still use the method I'm going to show you to figure out the right settings for that brand of foil plates. Besides a die machine and a foil plate, you'll need three things to start foiling. A foiling system, foil, and paper. And we're going to discuss each of them for the most ideal settings for our foil plates. There are two leading foiling systems on the market. One is the Glimmer by Spellbinders, and the second is the Gemini Foil Press by Crafters Companion. Our foil plates works beautifully on both. If you already have a DECA machine, your choice is limited. You have to go with the foiling system that works with your DECA machine. Get the Glimmer machine if you have the Spellbinders Platinum or the Sizzix Big Shot. Get the Gemini foil press if you have the Gemini or Gemini Junior DECA machines. We will compare the systems and go over the settings later in this video. As for the foil, you need to get the foil that's made to go with those foiling systems. The foils that are designed to work with an emulator will not work with those foil plates and the foiling systems. We will get to that later in this video. Personally, I prefer the Glimmer foil by Spellbinders. They're much more available in the US than the Glimmer foils. Also, for some reason, the foil that came with my Gemini machine has wrinkles on them. And all those wrinkles will end up showing up in my foil transfer, which is not ideal at all. It could be I just got a bad row of foil. If it's working for you, totally fine. Use whatever is available to you. Paper is important. When you hot foiling with the plates, you are actually pressing the foil plate into the paper. The smoother the paper, the better the transfer. In general, I would say keep your cardstock to 80 to 100 pounds and the smoother, the better. If you just want to know the conclusion about what paper to use, hands down, we recommend Hammer Mill 100 pound cover cardstock. I first heard of it from Jennifer McGuire. If you're a car maker, you probably already know her. Or if you're new to car making, you need to watch her videos. So anyway, we sell the Hammer Mill cardstock in a small pack in our store. But I highly recommend that you just go ahead and get a pack. There's 250 sheets in the pack, and for some reason, they're only available in six packs per case. They're only available in the case on Amazon. But you can totally try your local print supply shop, like Cali paper, Spicer paper. You probably will be able to buy a full pack of it. Some other papers that work for me are Nina Solo Y 80 pound cover cardstock in Nina Environment Desert Storm Smooth 80 pound cardstock. So the Desert Storm is actually a craft color, which is beautiful when you foil in silver. And if you're a card maker, you probably already have the Nina papers. Once you have all the supplies, the DECA machine, a foiling system, foil, and paper, we can start foiling. We're not the first ones to carry foil plates, because I've heard some concerns about they couldn't achieve consistent result in their foiling. But the results are so beautiful. We finally decide no matter what it is, we're gonna figure it out. You may have noticed in some of my sample photos, 
I was using version five of our foil plates. I actually, the first batches of the foil plates, I could make it work for me. It's just the results is not consistent. We actually worked with the manufacturer on the consistency for over six months. After some trial and error, I believe we have some of the best foil plates that's available on the market today. My vendor had to order special materials for us and they had to follow up closely during the production. And I think the defect rate right now is still 67%, which means every foil play we have now, there were two other ones that didn't make it through the quality assurance. But once you have it in your hand, they should work great. And let's get started on the settings. First thing you'll notice that's different with our foil plates is that even if you have to use a shim for some other foil plates you might have, you probably don't need a shim for our foil plates. A shim is usually just a piece of cardstock that you add to your sandwich before you're running it through the die cut machine for added pressure. But with our foil plates, you usually don't need to do that. I actually tested on all the machines in our office. I didn't need to use a shim on all of them. That includes one big shot, one um, platinum by Spellbinders, and the Gemini. As you can see on the screen here, Gemini machine has a lot more buttons than the Glimmer machine. But if you're following all along, getting the right foil machine, the foil plates, the foil, and the paper, all you need to worry about now is the temperature. So temperature will only rise within the silicone part of the platforms. On the Glimmer, it's a taupe area on the left. And on the Gemini, it's a purple area on the right. All of our plates will feed on both platforms. Even though there are more buttons on the Gemini, both systems basically work in three steps. Number one, turn it on. And you should see the first light on top is lit in red on the Glimmer, and the first light on the left above the power button is lit in red on the Gemini. Here's the difference. For the Gemini, you need to set the temperature. You have three settings, low, medium, high, and the default is low, which is also what the instruction recommended to use for 110 pound cardstock, which did not work for me, which you will see later in this video. I've tried all three settings and found that it's just easier to leave it on high and then heat it up for about one minute, which is pretty much the same as what Glimmer is actually ended up with. Next, the second step is to wait for your platform to heat up. Wait for it to be ready. It takes about five and a half minutes for both machines to be ready. A ready light will lit in green to let you know it's ready. On both machines, when the ready light gets on, both platforms reached about 125 degrees Fahrenheit. I need to put in another disclaimer here. The temperature here is for your reference only. I do not have a more accurate way of measuring the temperature, but as long as the reference point is the same, it doesn't affect my conclusions. Temperature plays a big part in achieving a good result with your foil plates. Even from the same brand, the different colors of the foils have a different melting point. That might not be the right term. What I meant is the foil needs to reach a certain temperature before it will transfer. And that temperature is different for each color of the foil. You can see the timer in the bottom of my screen. In about three minutes after the red lights were on, the temperature on the Gemini stayed at around 135 Fahrenheit. But on the Glimmer, the temperature keeps rising and has gone over 150 which is the magic number in my experiment here. Let's put out triple line diamond foil plate on both platforms and press the timer button. On the Glimmer, the light above the timer button starts flashing in green. And on the Gemini, the countdown will start. In the video here, I set it in 30 seconds and that's what the user manual suggested, but it wasn't enough. We will get you the settings I ended up used later in this video. As shown in the video, the foil plate only reached about 106 Fahrenheit after the 30 second countdown, and the foiling results wasn't ideal. The timer on the Glimmer is exactly one minute, and there have been three minutes after I pressed the timer button on the Glimmer. 
the foil plate has reached 150 degree Fahrenheit. And the foil and paper running through the DECA machine, I do like to wait a few seconds for the paper to cool down before I will remove the backing of the film. So I went ahead and tried the medium heat settings for 30 seconds on the Gemini foil press. Now let's review the Glimmer foil result. Some excess foil around the tight corners of the designs, which is expected, just rubbing it off with your fingers. The gym light on medium heat reached 145 and it's run a foil sheet through. So here's another difference between the two foiling systems. On the gym light, the plant form can be plugged in and out very smoothly. So I was adding the foil and paper while the plate was still heating, which I assume probably went over 145 and about 150 when I run it through my DECA machine. And here's the comparison. Same foil, same paper, same operator, you will get a completely different result when the foil plate reached 106 and 145 before running it through the DACA machine. I didn't use a shame on either run. This is just the difference between 30 seconds and low heat and one minute and medium heat. There was a few missing parts on the right edge of my plate. I think it's just my DACA machine. It's been used for many years now in the office and probably has some wear and tear that on the edges is looser than what's in the middle. We can easily fix that by running the plates through the machine twice. And finally, we are moving on to the high heat setting on the Gemini. And you can see the plate reached 145 Fahrenheit in about 30 seconds. I actually waited for about another minute for it to reach 180 degree Fahrenheit before I run another sheet of foil for transfer. While we wait for the paper to cool, the Glimmer reached 168 degree Fahrenheit or 76 degree centigrade, and I ran another sheet of foil. As you can see, I had to pull the Glimmer platform off the heating duct before I add my foil and paper to avoid any shifting during the process. I assumed that the plate cooled down a little, a degree or two, when I run it through the DACA machine. So that 20 degree difference doesn't seem to matter at all. Same beautiful results. But once the plate reached 180 degree Fahrenheit, which is two minutes on high on the Gemini, I noticed more excess foil that needed to be rubbed off by fingers, but still a great result. You can just rub them off. I tried using a brush for removing the foil, but the bristles were so hard, it actually brushed off some of the intended lines. I would recommend just using your fingers. In case you wondered, the foil plates will be reaching 200 degree Fahrenheit on the gym light before the heat protection comes on. So both machines has heat protection. Once it's reaching 200 degrees, the heating unit will turn off so that platform can start cooling down. But with that being said, there's no magic about those timer buttons. They're simply a timer. Nothing happens on the heating unit or on your platform when you press the timer button. It just simply works as a timer for you. As at least letting you know that's one minute, three minute, two minute. But Basically, as long as your machine is on, the heating platform is ready, and your plate is on the form, it's being heated all the way. The longer you wait, the higher temperature, the higher temperature it'll go and until you reach 200 degree Fahrenheit. And this limitation of 200 degree Fahrenheit is also why the laminator foils, such as the deco foil, would not work with the hot foiling system that was designed for DACA machine. Because those deco foils, they need 280 degrees before they will start transfer. But our uh, desktop roller is actually a lower temperature foil. In my experience, that works best between 150 and 170. So one more time, let's go ahead and test the magic number 150 degree Fahrenheit on both machines. I didn't bother to push the timer button because I know my platform was heated up and the plate had been sitting on there for a while. So here's another thing that might affect your results. 
It's how you place your foil plate on the platform. Basically, we want the foil plates to go in the DACA machine vertically. So like this oversized hello, I'm putting it sideways so that the longer, like it takes longer for you to go through the DACA machine. This is actually so far what I found works best to avoid overfoiling around tight corners. Here's an example. We are having a matching die to cut out the foiled oversized hello, but there was a mistake. They made the die to be a solid die, which cannot be used for matching up the letters. We're going to have the dies fixed and we'll re-release them probably in April, but with the matching die, the foil just looks beautiful. We have a five pack of our favorite foils on our website. And among these five colors, the speckled gold and silver has the lowest temperature requirement. And this silver seems to be the highest. So I just left the foil place sitting longer on the platform for about three minutes after the red light was on before I foiled it. There is still some missing spots on the hello here, which may not be satisfying, but there is an easy fix. You can just run it through the machine and then go back again. I call this a double run, but you know, of course you can just take it up and uh, run it through the machine the same way. But remember, we're also trying to avoid shifting the plates. So I would just waste the plate going through, you know, not completely out yet, just roll it back. This is on the Glimmer machine. Let's look what it looks like on the Gemini. So on the Gemini machine, same temperature, same foil, I was able to get a perfect impression by just running it through once. Why is that? So here is, I didn't cover it in the beginning, but on the Glimmer machine, it has this green foiling plate, and then you have to use another clear plate, like a cutting plate on top of the green plate to put it on your machine. So the stack is thicker, but with Gemini being perfect on this one pass, I think part of the reason is that you, between your machine and your foil plate, you only have this thing, green uh, foil plate, actually provides a good result. But on the Gemini, I don't have another Gemini machine at the moment to say what are the, on the edges, whether it happens to all the machine or just my machine, which is another easy fix. You just do a double run. You just run it through twice. But, um, for all that smaller plates, my Gemini definitely cuts better. I've heard a lot of people were saying how much they don't like the um, Gemini foil press. Actually, I think you're probably having trouble figuring out the settings because the user manual is not of help to me. And probably it could be that I'm using Glimmer foil, which is by Spellbinders, which is now the Gemini foil. I do not like the Gemini foil. So anyway, so I was using Glimmer foils, but basically I just made the temperature to be about the same on both platforms. So on a Gemini, the no heat definitely will not work. So the medium heat, you need to wait two minutes for it to reach 150 and three minutes for 180 for some of the ones like the silver. And then on high, you only need one minute, which is exactly the same as the Glimmer machine. One minute on high for the Gemini to have a perfect result on the speckled gold and the speckled silver. And then, you know, just in between, you don't have to be exactly about the time. It's just a good starting point for you to experiment. And the best I found is maybe put out your thermometer um, and measure the play temperature yourself. If the temperature is high enough, you know, over 150, and you're using the hammer mill cardstock, but you still couldn't get a good result, I would finally try adding a piece of paper as a shame. But if even that doesn't work for you, there is a chance that it's the foil plate itself. But um, I think the problem should be consistent if you run into a problem like all the other designs by this company should have the similar problem, which means you just need to figure out a, a specific settings for their plate. But for ours, 
it's just as easy as I just tell you guys. So the right foil, the right temperature, and then you're good to go. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this video and answered some of your questions. So happy foiling.